Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jesse Lang coming to you from the Mullen Automotive Museum because today is all about Bugatti. Sitting behind me is the 1936 Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic, a car that was clearly the product of a wild and unrestrained imagination. The car behind me was formerly the property of Lord Victor Rothschild, who purchased this car so that his son would have something to drive while attending Oxford. It's bizarre and fantastical. It's one of the world's most expensive automobiles, and it's widely regarded as the first supercar and the most beautiful ever made. Only four of these cars were ever produced, and one recently sold for $40 million. It was originally constructed out of magnesium, a material so flammable that they could not weld any of the parts, and therefore they had to implement these rivets. From the start, Bugatti has been redefining the boundaries of what is technically possible, and now, 76 years later, they're doing it again with an open-top version of the Grand Sport that they officially unveiled at the Geneva Auto Show last week. Very few people on the planet will ever have the chance to get within 10 feet of the Vitesse, but lucky Motor Trend correspondent John Kerry did. John headed down to South Africa for the rare opportunity to follow engineers on shakedown runs. I'm John Carey for Motor Trend. We are here in a Volkswagen Group compound in South Africa where the guys from Bugatti are working on something new. It may look just like a ground sport roadster, but behind the seats is the 1,184 horsepower engine of the Super Sport Coupe. This car should be the most awesome open topped car ever created. It's called the Vitesse, that's French for speed and we're here to tail Bugatti's engineers and technicians on shakedown runs as they make sure that the name really does fit. The Veyron is the excess all areas supercar and with the Supersport there's even more excess, enlarging the quad turbochargers and intercoolers of Bugatti's 8 litre W16 engine lifts power from 987 to 1184 horsepower. Maximum torque is 1100 foot pounds and to cope with that, the car is equipped with a purpose-designed seven-speed double-clutch transmission. All that torque means all-wheel drive is absolutely essential, and the Bugatti uses Haldex technology to spread the workload evenly among all four of its custom-made Michelin tyres. Bugatti's engineers have made small changes to the Vitesse's suspension setup compared with the regular Grand Sport Roadster. Its springs are slightly softer, and there are new low-friction dampers. This development car has been in South Africa since November 2011. At the end of each day's testing, gigabytes of data are downloaded for on-the-spot analysis. Like any development car, this Proto is a little scuffed and scruffy, but it is equipped with extra power supplies, GPS-based performance measuring equipment, and a separate 300-channel data logger to capture temperatures and pressures of key components. Now, I've been told that this seat is strictly reserved for Bugatti's test drivers, but I'm gonna do my best to get some time behind the wheel of this car. Bugatti public relations man, Julius Kruter, is the guy who holds the keys for the Vitesse. Julius, um, now before we head out on the road, I've got to ask this question. Uh, is there gonna be seat time? Am I gonna to get to drive a car? Do I speak Chinese? What's Chinese for no? Because <laughs> I guess that's the answer, isn't it? That's the answer. It's summer down here in South Africa, where temperatures often soar over 100 degrees. For a car like the Vitesse, with an engine that has so much excess heat to dissipate, it's the perfect torture. In the tiny towns of the South African outback, beaten up Toyotas are common, Bugatti's aren't. In sleepy Staplerville, the Vitesse was mobbed like a movie star. Bugatti test driver Jens Schulenberg has helped develop every Veyron version right from the very first. It's work that never stops, and so when Europe is covered in snow, he heads south of the equator. A set of four tires for the Vitesse costs more than $10,000, and it can take just one day of high-speed, hot-weather testing to trash them. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, ready? Yeah, he's ready. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're gonna go now. That was 
it's better than the first one. I wanted to squeal just like a little girl. <laughs> and if the performance is incredible, what's even more amazing in this car <laughs> is the brakes. You can hear it, literally, when you're hard on the brakes, yeah. pulling the stones out of the bitumen, out of the asphalt. Yeah. It is incredible. I'm here with Julius of Bugatti, and I've got a big question to ask him. I've been riding with your engineers, Julius, and that's been very interesting, but I haven't driven the car. And I've got to tell you, I'm a Bugatti virgin, and I need the wheel time. Can you make it happen for me? Not at the moment, John, I'm afraid. Julius, that's, that's just not the answer not I want. the answer you wanted to hear. No, there's got to be some arrangement that we can make, surely. I mean, you're a reasonable man. You can be bribed, I think. Come on, what would it take? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot more than you can think of. John. Julius. You're not coming up to me to ask the same question again, are you? It's been several hours. Sounds like minutes to me. Well, it might feel that way, but I've got to have an answer. The answer is no. <sighs> again? John, it's no, I'm sorry for that. Vitesse is a breathtaking, brutal experience. From a launch control standing start, the G-forces squeeze the air from your lungs and slam your head backwards. The first examples of the Grand Sport Vitesse won't be ready for handover to owners until late in 2012. The US dollar price tag? Around two million. Well, it's been a real experience baking under the African sun with Bugatti's engineers and technicians as they work to finalise the new Grand Sport Vitesse for production. The car won't be launched until June, and when it is, we're going to be there to find out if it really is the world's fastest roadster. This is John Carey in South Africa for Wide Open Throttle. Well, wait, wait, John, quick ask him if I can drive it. And one last note about the Vitesse that's sure to depress all car lovers. The two development cars you saw that were constructed specifically for the Vitesse program will both be destroyed when their work is done. The three pre-production versions Bugatti will build as practice for the start of customer car production will meet the same sad fate. If only there was someone who was willing to take them off their hands. <clears throat> That's all for this episode of Wide Open Throttle. Special thanks to the Mullen Automotive Museum. Make sure you tune in to Ignition on Monday when Carlos Lago gets his hands on BMW's M5 Super Sedan. And next Friday, check out Epic Drives when Angus McKenzie and Justin Bell have their way with the Corvette ZR1 in Europe. I'm Jesse Lang, and I'll see you next time. Wait, there's one more thing I've got to show you before we go. This awning is made out of Bugatti windshields. How cool is that?